going to give it a couple minutes. All right, going to start. Make sure everything is up and running. Wait for some people to join in. You can give it another five minutes. Well, not five minutes because it's not even seven yet. Oh boy, a little bit of jitters. All right. All right, Danny, my man. Thank you for joining, brother. We're gonna just give it 7.05. I'm start at 7.05. And then we'll get the show on the road, bud. But you're more than welcome to chat. We can have a talk. Meanwhile, while we're waiting for everybody, Millie, welcome, welcome. We're going to give it to 705, guys, all right? We're going to just wait for some more people to come in, and we're going to get this started. All right. Hey, Danny. Oh, so, so thankful, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope and I pray this is a blessing to both of you, even if it's just you two. Hey, listen, God is good. And I, I don't I don't care if it's just one person, even if it's just somebody watching this later, all for the glory of God. I'm not here for the numbers. I'm just I'm just here to to edify the body. So praise the Lord. 705 will get started. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I pray and I hope too that this video will save. Oh, I hope this video will save. I'm using this program called Lula TV. And once the pro broadcast is over, I'm gonna do two videos. So I have one. One hour is going to pass. I'm going to restart, do another hour, and then hopefully we can save both videos so I can have people watch this uh, later on. That's that's what I'm praying for. I'm hoping that this will save. This is what I'm hoping for. But if it doesn't, whoever joins, glory be to God, you guys got the message, right? That's all that matters. So, yes, amen. I can't wait for you to hear what I have to say. And it's not because of me. This is what God's doing in my life, what he's done in my life this whole month, man, of December. And I just, I'm trying to contain my, my, uh, the fire right now that's burning inside of me. I, I want to express that, but I got to be patient and I've got to do this not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Amen. Um, you know what? Let me, let me start us off with some prayer before we, before we get really into the video for 705. I'm going to start off in a quick prayer just to get us started. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to, to just share what, what you're doing right now. I, I'm so excited. I, I can't wait to share what you have placed in my life, what you've taken out, what you've put in, and all the things that you have shown me in this beautiful revelation, this journey that you have given me in the month of December. Father, I just pray and, and bless over every single person that gets their eye on this video, whether it be live or later on, later on in the recorded footage. And Father, I just pray through the Holy Spirit, just guide my tongue. I, I am so nervous, but Lord, because I, I don't want to be in the spotlight. I just want you to get all the glory. I don't I don't want anything that I say bring people to me. I want everyone to be brought to you. I don't want to be in the spotlight, Jesus. I want you to be in the spotlight. That I'm just a witness to your beautiful mercy and grace. And I, I want to extend that to my brothers and sisters so they can do the same on their channels and, and with their families and their friends and loved ones, Lord, because I want to, I don't want to keep what you're giving me, this fire that you have burning inside my heart. I want to share this to the world so they can understand this is what it means to be a Christian. It has nothing to do about the person. Oh, thank you, Jesus has everything to do with Jesus. I glorify you, Father. Speak through me. Let the fire from heaven be upon my mouth. And I say this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Awesome. Awesome. God is, oh, he's given me this, this peace in my heart. So good. So good. I'm so thankful. Awesome. Thank you, Shailene. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is an honor. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have such a beautiful set of brothers and sisters that are so encouraging to me. I, and I, and I pray that I could do the same for you guys. This, this is what I'm, it's all about. It's all about expo ex sharing our, our interest for the Lord to one another so that we could all get interested in serving the King. That's, that's all that matters. It has nothing to do with me or you. It's all about us coming as a body of Christ, one accord through the Holy spirit and just moving in that power and authority. Amen. Let's just move in it. I don't want to. I don't want to stay stuck in in the what ifs. I want to just move. On. I just gotta show that shirt. Shameless plug right here. Stand strong. We gotta stand firm in our faith. The message of tonight is firm faith, and with firm faith, God produces perfect peace. Amen. God gives us that perfect peace, and we have firm faith, just as it says in Isaiah chapter twenty six, verse three. I'm gonna have that open here before I start. Isaiah twenty six, verse three. Beautiful. 
just love that verse so much. This is that verse is literally the the whole month of December is this verse. This is what the Lord has been putting on my heart. So, oh my goodness. Thank you for joining, guys. I'm going to start at 7.05, okay? So just stay tuned for just a little bit. I'm going to start in three more minutes. I just want to see uh, if anyone else is going to join. Not, although it has nothing to do with the numbers. I'm not here for the numbers. But I'm just I'm just here to whoever wants to hear this message from the Lord that he has placed in my heart. Please, please stay tuned. I, I promise you it's going to be edifying. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, 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 good. It's going to be encouraging. It's going to get you on fire just because God is putting a fire in my heart. It's like I'm trying to keep it down. But... It's just oh, so good. So good. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to the Lord. The Lord is just amazing. Amazing. Oh, man. Come on. You guys are so good. I, what an honor it is for you guys to be here. You don't understand. If you think I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic, I'm more ecstatic because you guys just keep fueling my fire. I'm just so thankful for everyone here in this, in this room right now. I'm, I'm thankful for every single person, especially my, the two sisters. Uh, it's going to be Isaiah 20, 26, verse 3, uh, Sister Shailene, 26, 3, Isaiah 26, 3. This is literally the verse that has been I've been meditating on for the, all of the month of December. This is what the God has put in my heart to share with you guys through my testimony that I'm going to give. Um, not me coming to Christ, but in within my journey in Christ. This, this testimony of kind of getting right back on track. And also, I'm going to, in the second part of this video, because I'm going to do it twice, I'm going to do one hour just talking about what's happening in December. And then the second part of this video, I'm going to do it twice, two live streams, because Instagram only allows one hour each. The second hour, I'm going to talk about the ministry, how you can join, what's it all about, everything, the, the Skype chat that we have, all that stuff. So I'm going to start in one more minute, and we're going to get this ball rolling. And I'm just so, so thankful, so thankful, so thankful. God is so good to allow me to do this. You have no clue for me to be on this video right now is amazing. I'm just so thankful the Lord is allowing this to happen right now. And I'm just so thankful that this could be uh, a way that I can express uh, the joy that I have for the Lord for you all so that you can also experience this. This is not, this is not something that it should be kept to ourselves. The, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we should share that to one another so that the world can see it. Amen. That's what it's all about. We want the lost to see the joy of the Lord, so they will come into repentance, turn from their sins, come to the foot of the cross, give their lives to Jesus Christ so they could partake in the family. That's all it's about. Just being part of the family. We want to be a part of the family. The family of Christ adopted by Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is our Father in heaven. Yes. A new year with a new song. Amen. That, that is, whew, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with all, all Bible. You want Bible tonight? I'm going to give you all Bible. Amen. All right. Awesome. 705. Okay. This is my first live stream in the Armored Ephesians ministry. I am ecstatic. I am ecstatic what the Lord has to share with, with you guys tonight, okay? This is not going to be a one-time thing. This is not going to be just a one-and-done one type of thing. This is going to be every single part of the week, three times a week. We're going to come on here this live. We're going to do Bible study. We're going to do intercessory prayer. And I'm going to tell you how I got to this moment where I can express this joy I have in my heart. Okay. So what I want to do is that I want to do a quick summary of how I came to Christ. And then, uh, and then I'm just going to go into a brief, what happened the last two years of my life and, and then going into December of this last, uh, last year of 2020. Ready? So when I gave my life to Christ, in March 2018, it was the most beautiful thing that could ever happen in my life. I fully surrendered to the Lord. I said, Lord, you take everything from me, all my addictions, all my pains, all my struggles. You take all of it. I'm putting it on the cross, and 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 I want to live for you. I want to live for you. I surrender everything to you, and I and I meant it. I meant it with all my heart, soul, and mind, all my strength. I said, and my, my wife and I, we, we meant it. We wanted to serve the Lord in 2018. God moved instantly. He took away my addictions to alcohol, addictions to video games, addictions to all these perversions and worldly desires. He's just pulling them out. Like within months, that that same uh, a year in June, my wife, my mother-in-law, and I we got baptized. Being just a beautiful representation, water baptism is a beautiful representation of us going down 
right? Dying to our sins, dying just as Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. We're dying with him on the cross. We're under the water now. And then we're being resurrected with Jesus, right? And now we're living a new life. We're, we're publicly, we're giving a public uh, uh, proclamation of saying that we are servants to the king. Amen. So I did that in June. In July, God, in not even four months into my, my walk with the Lord, God was already through my pastor was already saying, Justin, you need to start ministry. You need to be on, you need to get in ministry. You need to get on YouTube. You need to be doing videos. And back then I had, I was like, God, I'm never going to go on YouTube. I'm never going on Instagram. I'm staying away from Facebook. I, I, I'm, I don't want to be a part of that social media lifestyle. I want to keep this secluded. I want to keep this to myself. Right. But God was like, no, 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 I want you. I want you in the spotlight. I want you to, to, to take that fire that I put in you. And I need you to show that to the world. Right. So this was already the anointing. I, I want to say the, the anointing, the oil has been put upon my head by my pastor. He's like, Justin, you need to get into ministry. But what happens is as, as I was moving into the later part of 2018, right. Um, I had my testimony video on YouTube. I had, I had my ASL uh, testimony where it's my testimony, but I, I do it in American sign language, uh, real, real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Brother. I pray the saves and I will definitely upload it for sure. Um, so with my parents, they're hard of hearing they're deaf. Uh, but glory be to God. He used that. Now I don't want to say disability, but he used that for my parents to, to have them meet in the same deaf high school of course get married and then they had myself and my sister both who came out perfectly fine hearing children but we learned sign language growing up so in my testimony i'm using my testimony but using american sign language if you haven't seen my testimony it's on youtube just look it up armored ephesians ministry on youtube you can see all the videos i have up it's not a lot it's gonna be a lot i'm gonna put them all there but for now if you ever want to watch my testimony it's there i have it in sign language you know uh just take a look you can hear it too i have the audio as well anyway so i do the video now this is this is where all this stuff started in november of 2018 i was trying so hard and this this is the thing that you can't do i was trying so hard to to bring those that i used to hang out with those, those family members friends whatever all my co i was trying to bring them into christ i was trying to like just get it. I was like, listen, you need to come to Christ. You need to come to Christ. I was just like, kind of like a force feeding. I was trying to put the spoon in their mouth. And I was just like, you need to get the gospel. You need to accept Jesus now, now, now. You got to come now. Right. And they were, they weren't, they weren't grabbing it. They were like, listen, I, 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 I know Jesus is real. I know he's God and everything, but I, I, I like how my life is. And what I did was I kind of, I kind of try to join in what they were doing. I'm like, Hey, maybe if I, if I go back to doing my old stuff, but you know, incorporate Christ, Maybe that's how I'm gonna bring them in, right? Maybe if I if I do the old things I used to do, but with you know God is guiding me, I can I can bring them in that way. And uh, you know I gotta be honest, it was not smart. It was not smart. You can't you can't listen to me. You cannot try to go into the world, do worldly things to try to bring people from the world to Christians. I mean to Christianity it doesn't work that way. Why? Because you're making it something that you are trying to do. God, Jesus is the only one that could bring somebody from death to life. Jesus is the only one that could take that person from spiritual death to spiritual resurrection. We are to plant seeds, plant the seeds in the hearts of men by preaching the gospel, but we are not to force feed. I learned this, but not at that time. So I was getting frustrated. I'm like, God, but I'm, I'm joining back into what we used to do, and I'm trying to do what we used to do, and I'm trying to bring them to Christ, but that doesn't work. What's going on? And I got frustrated. Ah, this is what happens. Now I'm getting frustrated in my walk. And now from 2018, all the way going into 2019, all the way going to 2020, I had beautiful spurts. God, God was just filling me with fire and I was on fire for the Lord. I, I joined three amazing ministries. One of them that I'm still a part of right now. The first one was CFM ministry. Awesome group. I love them all. They're doing amazing work for the Lord. I was joining with them in evangelism, Bible study. We were going out preaching the gospel. I was with them. I was going all the way. But what happened was I was doing this and this. I was going up and down, up and down, right? So my faith was rocketing. I was just hitting. It's like a heartbeat. If you could just picture a heartbeat, that was how my faith was for two years straight. I was like up, down, up, down, boop, boop, boop. Just, it was bad. <laughs> anyway, CFM, God moved me out of that ministry. But God just, he, he's like, listen, I'm not done with you. I'm going to take you to another ministry, okay? And what he did was he had my cousin, 
my brother Tony, who was in this stream. I love this man. He's my sword sharpener. What you did is as I'm my 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 passion to get back on to do videos again, it brought his he got he got it through. My cousin Orlando, he he told his brother, Hey, look, Justin is doing these videos for Lord, you gotta hit him up. And then we started talking, and then he brought me into this whole other world of intercessory prayer that I even know about. And from that point on, I've joined this group called the Prayer Warriors Group Chat. We 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 were all about intercessory prayer and being in just beautiful fellowship with one another. It was just amazing. God put me at the right time, at the perfect moment, to the right people that need to sharpen me. And I just thank God every single day for these people. You don't understand. These brothers and sisters are who I call on when I need prayer. These these are my brothers and sisters. I love them. I love them. So I was in there. I was in the Prayer Warriors Group, right? You're praying, interceding. God is teaching me how to pray and be on fire for the Lord, be moved by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going like this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, God, what are you doing in my life? But then I'm still falling back with the world stuff. I'm like, oh, I, I want to still do my video games. I still want to do um, interact with my old friends. And God kept telling me, listen, listen, I got already have a, a whole set of brothers and sisters who are ready. Who are, who are right there? Who is ready with you? Those old friends, they don't want to come to Christ. But I'm like, God, but I want them to come. I want them to be a part of it. I want them, I want them to join in, in in this amazing uh 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 fire that I have. But it doesn't work that way. You can't bring what God doesn't want you to bring right there. He want, he's, he's bringing you to a whole set of brothers and sisters. Listen, when you say, God, please allow me to be a part of a, a family of Christ, he will do so, but he's not gonna, he's not gonna be like, hey, you can't bring your friends if they don't want me. God, God's not going to force feed. God's not going to force you. You, you choose him. You have to, you see, you want, you have to come to him. God, God is a God of love and mercy. You think he, you, he wants you to be forced into the kingdom? No. Then it's about man. Then if it's a forceful thing, it's about man, man trying to, trying to uh, get the notoriety of God. When you choose him, you're surrendering. You say, God, I want you to be the center of my life. Anyways, 2019, moving into 2020. And I'm still in the prayer warriors group. God is so good. He keeps showing me in these revelations of, of being a part of this ministry. And now moving into 2020, God introduces me into another ministry for a short period of time, which is uh, the Cross of Cross for Christ Ministries. God allowed me to learn how to be a prayer intercessor. And now he has me in this ministry being the lead prayer intercessor. And this is where God's really showing me what it means to be part of a ministry. But still, still, I was up and down. I would get angry and I will get frustrated. And I'm like, God, why isn't it like this way? And I had arguments and I'm like, but I'm a Christian and I'm trying to figure out what is happening. And I feel myself going like this and back and forth. I feel as it is, as it describes in James, I felt two-faced. I felt like that man that's getting tossed to and fro with, with, with he's like the man that looks into the mirror. But when he looks in the mirror and then he walks away, he forgets who he is. That's how I felt. Everyone is like, "Wow, Justin, you're on fire for the Lord." Wow, Justin, you're 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 on fire for the Lord. Wow, Justin, you you could pray, you could pray and intercede for somebody. Wow, Justin, you know the scripture. Wow, Justin, you could do all these things. You're a holy man. You're this. You're that. But on the inside, I'm like, God, wh where am I going? I, I I see people acknowledging that you're inside of me, and I thank you that they're seeing you. But I don't feel that peace. Where's that peace that I first had when I, when I came to you? And it's so funny. Listen, it's so funny. We ask these things, right? We, we ask God, why, why, why am I this way? But we know, we know what it is. On the inside, we know what it is, but we don't want to give it up, right? Okay, so now all of 2020 going into the new year. Now we're in, in November. I'm in this group. We're, interced we're interceding. I'm in this part of this ministry. Everything is great, right? And I, I was getting frustrated. I was getting frustrated. I'm like, God, I can't be a prayer warrior and have all these things going on in my life. I'm trying to be an artist. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. Why am I not at peace? Why? Why? I kept asking God, why? I'm, I'm telling you every single day, God, forgive me. Forgive me of my wrongs. Forgive me for my anger. Forgive me for my struggle. Forgive me for this. Forgive me for this. And why is it that I feel like I'm going up and down in a heartbeat? I feel like I'm on fire. Then I'm not. I'm on fire. Then I'm not. I'm on a fire. I'm, I'm being transparent. You don't believe me? I have videos, man. I want I would love to share with you, but this is something that I need to express. I'm being 100% transparent and honest. I did not feel God's peace. As a Christian, listen to me, as a Christian, I did not feel God's peace. Why? Because I did not give up that one thing. I did not give up my, my that love and desire to play video games, that, 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 that enjoyment that I got. Now, before I finish, before I go on to the next part of December where I really, really want to take the meat of this, um, this live, 
It's not that video games is bad. What it is is that it can it can call you into idolatry, okay? Because I have a lot of brothers and sisters that I know personally that they still game. I have no issues with that. But with me personally, me personally, God has revealed to me so many times. He's like, Justin, Justin, listen. You cannot serve two masters. You want to be about video games or you want to be about me? You want to seek my glory or you want to still be in the world? And I'm like, oh, but I want to be. I want to be a prayer warrior. I want to be a, a prayer intercessor. I want to be an evangelist. I want to do ministry. I want to do all these things. But I, want to, I don't want to give this up. This, this video games, I love it. I love it. This is where my art style comes from. This is where all my passion comes from. I used to play video games my whole life. I can't give that up, God. God is like, okay. All right, then you can't have me. You can't have my peace. You because you you're you're still saved. Hey, listen, you're you're still my son, and I love you, and I will always, always show you that love and affection, but you can't have two masters. You can't be lukewarm. Oh, that hits, it hits hard, it hits hard. And now, now I can go into December, okay? At the end of November, I am frustrated. I'm telling the the brother who is in, in charge of Cross River Christ Ministries. Um, I'm like, listen, bro. I gotta get out. I gotta get out of this ministry. I, I'm 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 frustrated. I'm trying to I'm trying to show love to my wife. It's not working. I'm trying to show love to my kids. I'm not. It's not working. I'm getting angry, but I'm a prayer intercessor. I don't. I, there's something wrong. Something's messed up, and I gotta I gotta step out of the ministry for a second. I gotta get out. And he was thinking the same thing. So so the whole unfortunately, I, I pray for that brother. I pray he starts that ministry up again because it was so powerful, so powerful to see the move of God. But I did not have peace. I did not have peace. I did not have peace. I have to explain that. And this is why Isaiah 26, verse 3, it was so adamant in my walk. All right. So I get out the ministry. Mm, that was painful because I love, love, love to be the lead prayer and sister. I love when the Lord filled my fire, my heart with fire, and to pray and intercede for my brothers and sisters. That, that does that is the gift that God has given me. I know it without a shadow of a doubt, right? I got out the ministry. November, this is November 2020, right? I'm asking God, God, how do I fix this? I feel stagnant in my faith. Okay, I feel I, I'm. I feel like I'm going on a heartbeat, right? I, I I show you the line. I'm going up and down, right? But really, what was happening? I'm going like this. I'm going down. My faith, it, it, my faith is being broken, and I'm doubting God. This is God. This is the God who has saved me from damnation, right? And my God, I, I don't feel that peace. I don't, I don't. Everyone tells me, Justin, you're a holy man. Justin, you're on fire for the Lord. Justin, you're a prayer intercessor. Justin, you're all these things. But why is it that they're telling me these things? But when I look in the mirror, I don't see that. Right? This is, hey, you guys wanted to hear good stuff. I promise you. Listen, listen. It doesn't, it does not stop there. So I ask God, what do I need to do? So God fills, fills me in my heart. I'm reading scripture. He's like, listen, I need you to have private time with me. I need you to get off social media. I need you to close out all your accounts. I need you to seek my face every single day, all of December before the new year starts. All right. All right. I, I, I need to know why, why I'm not having peace. What's wrong with me, right? So I send out a post. As everyone knows, I send out the post. I'm like, listen, guys, I got to get off. I need to take time off, right? Facebook, Instagram. I shut down everything. Everything that I had, I shut it down. The only thing I was using is YouTube for Bible study. That's it, right? So I dedicated every single day of December. Not every, you know, again, I'm not perfect, but you know, I, I put my efforts and everything to read scripture. And I'm talking about read, 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 pray, 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 get into the word, seek God's face, right? And I and then the prayer that I had as I'm closing out my social media, I said, God, expose my heart. Tell me, please, what is wrong with me. Why don't I have peace? Why don't I even, I, it was so bad. Listen, it was so bad that I really thought, listen, this, this is, this is how good God is. I was so deceived that I really thought that I wasn't going to make it to heaven. I thought God put me on this earth to encourage everybody else, right? Encourage everybody else, but I'm not making it. I'm not making it to heaven. Everybody else is going to make it to heaven, but that's not for me. That's my, that was my, I, I, I'm being honest. That was my legit thought every single day. I'm like, God, I'm not making it. I, I, I keep falling. I keep struggling. I'm not making it. I'm not making it. God, I, I don't feel that peace, that, that reassurance that, that you're promised that I'm making it to heaven. I don't feel that. Expose my heart. Tell me what's wrong. Okay. Oh, now, <laughs> this is where God is so good. 
this is where God broke me. I'm talking about, guys, every single day in December, I recorded myself every day because I wasn't on social media and I was so used to doing videos. Like, I'll record myself to see the development of my faith and where God was taking me, right? Okay. December 6th, I do my longest video. It's like 15 minutes of me just recording on how I felt, right? This 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 is right here. This is this is gonna hit every it's gonna hit you right in the chest. Like, oh, I felt that. I was so honest to myself. I said it on video, I have it recorded on my phone. I'm like, I don't even feel like I'm a Christian. I don't even feel like I'm saved. Everyone says I'm this, I'm that, but I'm not who I was when I first came to Christ. I'm a husk. I'm just I like a, I'm like a photo imagery of my former passionate for the fire of Christ. I'm not that man. I can pray, I can intercede, and then the Holy Spirit's inside of me. So I, I was so confused. Why do I feel this way? I felt, I, I hit a, a low. I, I'm talking December 6th. I hit a low, guys. A low. I was like, God, I'm not, I'm not making it. I don't even know what's my purpose anymore. I, I don't even know what, what am I supposed to do anymore. I could pray and intercede for my brothers and sisters. I can go and evangelize. It's easy for me. But I don't have your peace. Where is your peace? Right? Mm, God is so good. God is so good. Guys, stick with me. God is so, so good. After that video, right? God reveals to me what's my problem. Woo! All right, here we go. Ready? I got I gotta, I get a little squirmy because it was so powerful. Okay. God revealed to me, Justin, my son, you lack these three things. You lack consistency. Here we go. This is the meat. This is this is the depth of this this stream right here. You lack consistency, you lack discipline, and you lack faith. What? What, what does that mean? God, okay, consistency, discipline, faith. Whoa, whoa, what does that mean? What I need to do with you before you get back on social media, before you get back in January. I, listen, this is the ministry idea what didn't even happen yet. This is just God revealing to me. Listen, before you go back to doing what I had you doing. The reason why you do not feel my peace is you're not consistent. Now explain. I love, listen to me very carefully. I love whooping some demon butt. I love bringing it to the kingdom of darkness. I love being a weapon for the kingdom of heaven. I love going ham with the scripture. I love my sword of the spirit. and I love slaying. I love it. I love it. But I hated the trials. Woo, who's that for? I hated the trials. I hated the attacks from the enemy. I hated being attacked from the enemy. I had no defense. No consistency. I can go offense, but I had no defense. I had no faith in the Lord to get me to endure hardship because I will get angry. I'm like, why am I losing in the trial? God is like, you're not having faith. You're not consistent. You want to be on fire for me. You want to be an intercessor. You want to be all these gifts that I've given you. You want to have all these things, but you still want the world. You cannot serve me and have the world. That's why the devil is so easily, he sends one little, this is what I said in this video, and the videos I was recording myself. He sends a nerf dart, not even a fiery dart. He sends a nerf dart, hits your, your, hits your Achilles heel, and you crumble. And then you cry out, oh, but God, I'm sorry, and I need to go back. And then you do the same thing again and again. It was a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Man, this is so good. Yeah, no consistency. Yes, yes, brother. Shield of faith. I'm going to get right to it. I love you guys. We're all in one accord, baby. This is awesome. You have no consistency because when you're on fire for me. I love when you're on fire for me, Justin, my son. I love it when you bring it to the enemy. I love it when you're on fire by my Holy Spirit. But you hate the trial. You hate to have no, you hate having no, you hate having defense. You hate enduring. You hate having hardship. How am I supposed to increase your faith if you're not willing to endure? Whoa, what? How am I supposed to increase your gift if you're not willing to endure trials? Now, on to the next thing, discipline. I love joining in the Bible study. I love joining in the prayer meetings. I love doing all these things. But I didn't enjoy my time with my wife and kids. I struggled. Because I'm God, why is it that I'm so eager to be in a prayer meeting, but I'm not eager to be with my wife? How is it that I'm so eager to be in the Bible study, but I can't even put an hour to play with my kids? 
What? Why am I like that? Because you do not have discipline. You do not discipline yourself in all aspects of your life. Whoa, what? You do not have my perfect peace because you are not disciplined. You want to be a prayer warrior, but you need to be a prayer warrior with your hus- with your wife and your kids, man. You cannot be a prayer warrior just in the group. You got to be a prayer warrior with your family. You cannot be a prayer warrior just with your brothers and sisters of the faith. You need to be able to teach your kids how to be a prayer warrior. Mm, so good. This is so good. Okay. Okay. And this is the most, Chris, consistency, discipline. But what did I lack the most, guys? Isn't this crazy? This is me. Guys, look, hey, look, I'm being consi- I'm being transparent here. I'm being so honest. Being so honest. The most important thing that I lacked was faith. I lacked faith in my Lord. I lack faith. Why? Because I didn't trust in him for my salvation. Ooh, who's that for, guys? Who's that for? I lack faith to trust in the promise of God that he says, by my salvation, by my mercy and grace, you will make it into the kingdom of heaven, but not by your works. I lack faith to trust in God in the trials. I lack faith to trust in my God to show my love and compassion for my wife and kids. I lack faith. I lacked faith to move mightily in the kingdom of heaven to move mightily in this world i lacked faith in my god because i did not trust in my god i'm a christian hey guys listen i'm a christian i'm being honest to lack that faith and god showed me that he showed me that he showed me through this month of december this is what he was revealing to me guys and something happened Mm, this is the best part this is what happened i said god i am so sorry that i did not give up the world so sorry if I can start serve two, two masters. I'm so sorry that I was lukewarm. Everyone says I'm on fire for you, but in my heart, I knew I was lukewarm. And you told me I was lukewarm. You said, Justin, you cannot have faith in me and be lukewarm. You cannot have compassion for your family and be lukewarm. You need to be on fire for me 100%. I'm like, okay, God, I don't know where this goes from here, but I, I'm doing it. I'm giving it up. The video games got to go. That the desire to play got to go. All this worldly stuff got to go. I, I got I to gotta stop. I can't serve two. Only one. Only one. Who do you serve? Who do you serve? I serve God. Oh my God, I serve you. I serve you. God is like, ooh, <laughs> look what I'm going to do with you, boy. Look what I'm going to do with you when you give me just a little bit. When you give me just a little bit, look where I'm going to take you. Okay. Now, after that prayer. I open up my scripture. Okay, this is the good stuff. This is this is the meat. God's showing me these amazing pastors on YouTube who's giving these beautiful Bible sermons. I recommend if you look it up, Calvary Church Ontario on YouTube, and also look up a uh, Pastor Jerry Flowers on Redefine TV. These two guys, okay, and all my brothers and sisters, they were showing me something that I never understood before. I had such trouble reading the Bible. Listen, listen, listen. I had such trouble reading this good, this, 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 oh, this stuff is so good. This is so good. Don't, don't miss what I'm about to say. I would read this. God has given me five, five star meals, right? This is a five star meal. This book is so deep. It's so good. But I was treating God's beautiful banquet, his spiritual manna. I was treating it like leftovers. Who's that for? God's five course meal, his scripture, the bread of life. I was treating it like leftovers, man. I I never understood what it meant to meditate on the word until in December. I never knew what it meant to meditate on this book until this month. I'm going to explain. I took this one verse, right? And, and another verse is too, but this verse, Isaiah 26, verse 3. I kept asking God, God, give me the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to read your word. And I opened up his book and I had joy in my heart because I'm not just reading scripture. I'm partaking of scripture. Oh, so good. So good. I look at this Bible and I will fall asleep, guys, before I will look at I'm forcing myself to read this book. And I said, God, I want to read your book. Why can't I get it? You can't partake of God's scripture and serve two masters. 
You, you, you can't partake of the goodness of this scripture, the bread of life, if you're not even hungry. Oh, who's that for? You can't partake of God's scripture if you're not hungry. Because what you do is you're full of the world. Here we go. You're full of the world. So you're bloated. Your spirit is bloated. So when you try to get in scripture, you're like, you get full. You're like, oh, I can't read this. It's, oh, it's boring. I just got scripture. I have to read. I'm a Christian. I got to read this. I got to read this. It's, I'm full. You got to be empty to partake of that book. You got to be empty. You need to be hungry for the word. You need to be hungry for the word. You got to be like, God, I don't care what's going on in the news right now. I don't care what's happening in the world right now. I want it to just be me and you in that book. I want it to be me and you in your word. Whoa, what? I get in this book now. I get in this Bible right now. I take one verse and I will meditate on it on all day. I was like, whoa, this is the bread. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is life. This right here, your scripture, your word is so good. I'm being nourished. Oh, God, you're so good. I give you glory, Father, what you're doing right now because I know somebody's on fire. I'm partaking of God's scripture differently, guys. All of December, I'm reading I'm reading Jonah. And, and, and I got, I'm going to tell you for the next, listen, when we go into the next part of the stream, the, the second hour, I'm going to get into the ministry part, but I just want to tell you my testimony of what happened in December. I promise you, stick around. It's so good. It's so good. I promise you. I take one verse, Jonah, the book of Jonah, Psalms 139, uh, Isaiah 26, verse 3, Ephesians. This is the funny thing. I would read Ephesians, and all I cared about was Ephesians 6, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 10 through 20, the armor of God. That was my favorite part of the Ephesians book. But I opened up the book of Ephesians. I'm like, whoa. The book of Ephesians, it's not just about chapter 6. Yeah, armor of God is awesome. Hey, listen, I'm the armor of Ephesians. I love the armor of God day and night. But you cannot put on the armor until you read the rest of the book. You cannot put on the rest of the put on the armor of God until you know why you're putting it on. Wow. Oh, so good. This is so good. Okay. So I'm reading Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, and I'm breaking it down. I'm like, whoa, whoa, why didn't I never understand the Bible like this before? Because I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't want to be fed by the Lord. I wanted to be fed by the world and the world, by the word and the world. I was, trying to, I was eating the world food. I was so stuffed that when I go into the word, I'll be displeased. I go into the word and I get tired or frustrated. And I'm like, I don't understand why the scripture is not hitting me. Like I see other people getting hit with it, right? But because I went to the Lord empty, I said, God, just take it out of me. Take out all this worldly stuff. I don't want to do that no more. God is like, I'm going to fill you with my spirit. Oh, so good. I'm going to fill you with the nutrients that your spirit has been lacking since 2018 when you first came to me. I'm going to give you that perfect peace. But you got to have firm faith. Oh, so good. I'm going to give you that perfect peace that you've been missing your whole walk. But you must have firm faith in me. Oh, no. Okay, okay. I thought it ended. Got to have firm faith in me. Okay. Now I'm, now I'm in scripture. Now I'm deep diving. I'm, I'm like, God, this is what it's all about. And then, then the fruits came. And it was so easy to love my wife. It was so easy to show compassion to my kids. It was so easy because now I'm not doing it from my own heart. I'm doing it from God's power. I'm doing it from God's authority. I'm doing it from God's love. Now I ask my wife, I'm like, what, do you see the change in me? Do you, do you notice it? And, she, it's, and the fact that she's acknowledging it, I'm just like, whoa, God, what are you doing in my heart right now? What are you doing? You're putting joy in my heart. To let, spend time with my kids is different now. It's different because I, I'm not doing it just to appease. It's so easy because I'm doing it from God's love. It's so easy. It's no force. You can't force love. You can't force love to your kids. You can't force love to your wife. You can't do those things. The only way you're going to love your kids and love your wife and love your husband and love your family and love your brother and your sister and whoever comes from God first, guys. It's so simple, right? You would think a Christian, Justin, this this is the guy. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you to your face. Uh, you, you hear it from the horse's mouth. You would think it's so easy. You think I would know that, right? But I didn't want to give up the world. I didn't want to give it up. I wanted to have the world and God. 
And I was struggling. I was like fighting. I was wrestling with God like Jacob. Ooh, I don't want to go there yet, but I have to. I was wrestling with God with this, with like Jacob was wrestling with God in the nighttime. <laughs> and then I just got, and then it just got to a point where I just surrendered to God. I just started holding God. I'm like, God, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I'm not letting you go until you give me this perfect peace. I'm not letting you go until you give me this perfect peace. And he's like, okay, okay, no problem. But you got to have firm faith. So good. So good. So then God reveals to me, Justin, just like Jonah from Nineveh, he comes out the fish and God says the same thing to Jonah like he did the first time. He says, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to preach the gospel. Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to preach to them. I want to preach that wicked city, that great city, that 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 cursed city. I need you to go over there and show them what I'm going to do with them if they don't repent, right? Justin, I've appointed you to do ministry. Justin, I have appointed you many gifts. I have done all these things for you. And now I'm going to do it again. I want you to start a ministry. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, what? You want me to do ministry? Uh, how? Where? What, how? what am I going to name it? What am I going to do? Who's going to join it? I don't know what I'm going to do with this ministry. Do I do Bible study? Do I just do prayer meeting? I didn't know. All right. God, just lead me. So, Armored Ephesian Ministry. Put the post out. Doing some, some stuff stuff on the side, right? And God's like, all right, you want, you're going to do ministry. Okay, we're going to do ministry. We're going to go full force in January 1st. We're going to go ahead with the ministry. Okay. And then God, I'm like, but God, should I start it now? He's like, no, no, no. I want you to take this this time in December. I need to grow you still. Okay, okay. So I kept growing and growing and growing. And my faith was growing. And I'm not perfect. Listen, not all of December was all perfect. But I cannot express how different my life has been this one month. Before, my faith was like this, right? Up and down. Faith. I'm going to call it the heartbeat faith. Up and down, up and down. Boop, boop, boop. Going all the way. And what happened is, is my spiritual heart, right, was pounding like this because I'm trying to have this and that, this and that, this and that. Boom, 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 boom. And my heart is my, basically my heart flatlined, my spiritual heart flatlined. And God's like, I need to resurrect. I need to resurrect you. I need to get you back up and running again. There's people that need to hear your word again. You encouraging your people, the people on Instagram, I need you to keep doing that. Okay, okay. Boop. All right, here we go. More faith. Boop. More trials. And <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I have been put on my trials in December, and it's not going to stop. But the difference is I have the Lord's perfect peace, and now I have my defense. Now I have faith in the Lord. Now I'm trusting in him in the trials because now I'm like, God, these trials are strengthening me. Woo! This persecution is strengthening me. You're doing this because you love me. You want me to grow. Trials. Listen, guys, not every trial is an attack from the enemy. Listen. Listen, this is this is the deep stuff. This is what you wanted, right? Not every trial is from the enemy. There are some trials God is specifically using to refine you. Oh, so good. Yes, the enemy can use those trials against you. Yes, the enemy is crafty. He will use those moments where you feel so frustrated and your soul, you're you're walking in tension, and the enemy's gonna throw those fiery darts. He's like, oh, they're, oh, he's in a trial now, right? Ooh, he's a, he's trusting the God now, right? Let me let me throw a little fire dart here and there and over there, and I'm gonna hit him that way and this way. I'm gonna hit him that way, right? But what do we need? The shield of faith, faith, because you're trusting in God. You're saying, God, I acknowledge this is a trial for me to grow. I acknowledge this is the trial for me to grow, and you know what that does? That douses the flames guys that douses the darts because now you're laughing look listen oh man this is so good i had joy in my heart i'm not saying it's perfect i'm not perfect listen i'm not perfect i'm no means ever will be but i have god's perfect peace and i will say it all the way home when you have the lord's joy in your heart listen to me it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you it doesn't matter what he sends your way you are so firm in your faith. You're saying, God, I glorify you. Thank you that you are training me. Thank you that you, you have compassion to show me that this is how I grow. And I'm like, God, I want defense now. I got the offense. God is like, listen, you know how to swing that sword, but you need the shield. You need to throw up the shield because you're. this is what happened, guys. I was so on fire in the prayer meetings, but afterwards when the trials came, I dropped. There was no shield. 
Every time I go into the Bible study, I'm being filled with the word of God. But after the, after the Bible study finish, there's no shield. I drop because the enemy is not going to let you slide. Listen, the enemy is not going to let you slide. You think you could attack him. You think you could come against the kingdom of darkness. You think you could come against these spirits and demons. If you have no shield of faith, if you come into this, listen, 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 this is, this is the meat. If you come into walking for Christ, you better mean it. You better mean it. Listen, you come into Christ saying, oh, I give everything to you, God. I, I surrender. And you go halfway? You don't think the enemy's going to sniff you? You don't think he's going to smell you out? Like, that's not a real Christian. I'm going to take him out in two seconds flat. That's what he did with me. Listen, you want to learn? I'm going to tell you my experience. The enemy took me down every single time because I had no faith in the Lord to trust in him. Now, now so good. I acknowledge God, there's no way I can make it into heaven. Of course. Only way I'm getting into heaven is because of you. Oh, so good. The only way I'm getting into heaven is by your mercy and grace. That's what I was missing. I thought I had to make my way into heaven. I, I thought I, because of my struggles, I'm like, oh, God, if I mess up today, I'm not making it. But if I mess up today, I'm not making it. But if I mess up today, I'm not making it. If I mess up today, tomorrow, the next day, I'm not making it. I was doing it the wrong way. You can't make it into heaven. You and I cannot make it into heaven. That's why the God's mercy and grace is so good because he gets us into heaven. Oh, so good. His cross gets us into heaven. His blood gets us into heaven, not us. You and I cannot make it to our, on our own. You don't think the devil doesn't know that? You don't think he doesn't do that to test you? Doesn't you? Don't you think that's what he throws to throw at you? Oh, you better make it. You better do something about your faith. You're rocky right now. You're shaky. You think you're really going to make it into heaven? Of course I'm not making it into heaven, Satan. Of course not. Who am I unworthy to, to have the Lord's grace? I'm the chief of sinners, as, as Paul says. But it's because his mercy and grace is so good. It's because he gives us perfect peace. It's because his promises are eternal and golden and perfect that we make it into heaven. Oh, my goodness. When you Listen, guys. If you acknowledge that your faith is stagnant, um, I don't have a timer, so if this cuts out, I don't know the time here. I, I think an hour is about to end, but whatever. If it ends, just, just join back in. We're going to go right back into the second hour, all right? Don't worry. It's not going to end. Just go right back in, all right, guys? But let's go. If you feel that your faith is stagnant, okay? If you feel like you're doing the heartbeat thing, like I was explaining earlier, if you feel like if you feel like you, you, you're you missing something, if you don't feel that peace like you used to, that zeal, that fire, that passion when you first came to Christ, you were like, whoa, I could do anything in God's strength. I could do anything in God's strength. If you're missing that, you're lacking that, listen, don't let anybody tell you that is how the Christian walk is supposed to be, that you lack God's peace. Don't let anybody tell you that, that you, you, you're supposed to not have joy in your walk. That is how the first century Christians were able to do what they did. How do you think Stephen, being stoned, mind you, was able to see heaven? And he was not looking at the stones, guys. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know. He was looking to Christ. Ah, oh, so good. So good. He was looking to Christ. He was looking to the heavens. He says, I don't even care what's happening to me right now. I don't care what persecution that hits me. These rocks are hitting me, but I'm about to be in heaven. These rocks are hitting me, but I'm about to be in heaven. These fiery darts are coming at me, but I'm coming into heaven. I'm coming in with full praise and glory to the Father who has given us the way out. That's how we make it, guys. That's how the church is going to make it. That's how the church is going to make it. We need to be persecuted. But we're not going to be persecuted in misery. We're not going to be persecuted and lacking. No, guys. No, 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 no. The reason the body of Christ will be in one accord, which I already see it. 2020 has, has shown that to me. The reason for the season, all right, the reason we're going to make it. It's because we are trusting in our God. We're having firm faith. We're saying, God, you want to do this? Let's go. You want to put us on fire to be on blaze for you? Let's go because, God, you are our joy. God, I can't, I can't, I, I can't express. I, there's no words that can express the joy that God has put in my heart. This is how you do ministry. This is how you do Bible study. This is how you, you evangelize to your family. If they do not see God's peace in you, if they don't see God's joy in you, they don't even know what that is. Why do you think the world is suffering? Why do you think people are desperate in need of hope? 
We have been showing the world the wrong Christians. We have been showing the world wrong Christianity. We are trying to be like the world. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're trying to be like the world, guys. We're trying to be like them. They need to be like us. And how are we going to do it? What, what kind of question is it, Justin, that how, how are we going to show the world Christ? How, is it by evangelizing? Of course. Absolutely. Is it by preaching the gospel? Of course. Absolutely. But you can't preach the gospel without joy in your heart. You can't preach, you can't evangelize to your family and to your friends and to your brothers and your sisters and your husband and your wife and your kids and whoever if you're just doing it just to do it. The reason why God calls us to make disciples, to preach unto all, uh, 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 preach unto all nations, that great commission that he has given us to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, to make disciples in his name. Did you not forget that last part? What does he say? He says, I will be with you always to the end of age. Does that not bring you comfort, brothers and sisters? Does it not bring you comfort that God says, listen, just, just, just look at this imagery. God's hands, right? We're in God's perfect hands. Why are we worrying? Why are we doubting? Why do we have fear? God doesn't give us fear. God does not give us a spirit of fear. That says it in his word. You want Bible? I'll give you Bible. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Why is it that Christians don't have sound minds? Why don't we have peace? Why don't we have sound minds? Why don't we have fear in our hearts? Why are we doubting? That's not from God. You think you walking in this faith and you're not having peace right now? You think that's what God called us to live? You, you think this is the life of a Christian? You think, you think this is what God has said, okay, you want to pick up your cross and follow me? You have to deny your flesh and then pick up your cross and follow me, okay? You think we're supposed to do that? And, and, and be suffering and not do it with the Lord's perfect peace? How are you to suffer? Listen, how are you to suffer for Christ if you don't even have his joy? Oh, gosh, God, you're so good. God, I glorify you because somebody's catching this message. How are you to go under severe, listen to me, severe trials? I'm talking about even your death. How are you supposed to do it if you're struggling? How are you supposed to do it if you're doubting? How are you supposed to do it if you don't even know if you're going to make it or not? You question. Is God the author of confusion? No. Who is the author of confusion? Who is putting doubt in your mind? Who is putting fear in your heart? It's not God. This is something that my brother Tony, I don't know if he's still here or not. This is something my brother Tony a while back in, uh, in June of this year. And it's something that resonates with me so good. It's such a good, good thing to say. We are so hard on ourselves that when God has already forgiven us, how is it that God has already forgiven us, but we can't forgive ourselves? How is it that God has already forgiven us, but we can't forgive that person? How is it that God has already forgiven us, but we cannot forgive those that we hurt or ask for forgiveness, I should say? God has already forgiven us, guys. Stop walking and struggling. You want me to go deep? You want me to, you want me to get to the root of the problem? Here we go. I know many of you are struggling. I know many of you are struggling with these sins and this, this desire of the flesh and, and all these things. Okay? And I'm not I'm not judging. Listen, no judge. Just 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 hear me out before I, before you end the before you leave, be like, oh he's, he's hitting me now. I, I gotta go. Oh whoop, I gotta go now. No, just listen, just listen. Just hold on, just for one second. I know many of you are struggling. I was there. I was there. Listen, I was there. I was there for two years straight. I was there for two years straight, struggling, struggling. I'm, I'm talking wrestling with God, wrestling. But you cannot do this on your own. You struggle with those desires, those passions, those, the, the, the lustful thoughts and all these things of the world, addictions, right? And you're Christians, right? We're Christians, right? We're brothers and sisters of the faith. How is it that we're still struggling? Listen, God has freed us from sin. But now that gives us that gives us the freedom to sin. All right, listen. God has freed us from Egypt, right? I'll give you scripture. Israelites were freed from Egypt, right? They got part of the Red Sea and now they're in the wilderness. But how is it that the Israelites still had an appetite for Egypt? They're like, man, we want to go back. I'm hungry for watermelon. Man, I want to go back. At least we have somewhere to sleep. I don't want to sleep in a tent. God, why is it that you took us to the desert? God, why is it that you took out that you took us to the promised land? God, but God this, but God that, but God this. God, but what? God, but why? But why? But why? Right? Right? 
Now, now let's change it up. God has taken us, you and me, from Egypt, from our shackles, from our bonds, right? The Red Sea is Jesus, right? His blood, parting the Red Sea, his, by his blood, you are now going from slavery to sin to freedom to serve Christ, right? You're now in the wilderness. But how is it that we still have that appetite? How is it that God has saved us, but we still want to go back to Egypt? That's why we struggle. You, you want me to be honest? That's why we struggle. Because we want what we used to have. We go back to the vomit. Because we remember how good it was, right? God has given us the free. He has given us the ability to choose now to serve him or to deny, uh, to serve him, deny your flesh, pick up your cross or follow him or to fall back to your sin, fall back into your lukewarmness, fall back into your old life. And God is going to be, hey, listen, you want to go back to your old life? Watch what that's going to take you. I'm like, God, but I want to be part of the world too. He's like, all right, all right, Justin, I'll see you in two years. I'll see you in December 2020 when you come back to me. I'm being honest, guys, listen, I do videos for you every day. I, I, I put my heart and soul into those videos, right? I put my heart and soul into those videos because I want you to be encouraged. But I want this to be the, this is the most important message I have to tell you. You have to be honest with God. Be honest. There is a beautiful, listen, listen, prayer is so beautiful. We forsake prayer. I'm going I'm to I'm be honest. We forsake prayer. God has given us a way to speak to him. Listen to me. We, as Christians, we are sons and daughters adopted into the kingdom of heaven, to the family of God, right? Jesus has made that way. He has made that. He's breaking us from our sin. We are no longer bond to our old sin, guys. Listen to me. Your, your old passions, you are not stuck to those no longer. Jesus has freed you. I'm going to ask you a question. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. Ask yourself this. Is Jesus' cross enough? Is his blood enough? Listen to me. Is his blood enough? Is his blood enough for you? Be honest with yourself, guys. This is this is this is where it hurts. This is where you need to go to God in prayer and say, God, I don't think your blood is enough. I, I you say you saved me. You say you saved me from, from 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 masturbation and pornography. You saved me from these things, right? You you saved me from addictions to alcohol and drugs. I saved me from sexual idolatry, from, from wickedness and covetousness. You saved me from those things, right? You freed me from those chains. So why is it that I feel like I'm not free? It's because you don't think God's blood is enough. You don't think the cross is enough for you. You think you need to do more. I'm speaking to somebody, you think you need to do more. You think you need to do something in order to, to be free from that. God has already freed you. It's that we fall back. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. This, this, is, this is pure Holy Spirit talk. You, you, think, you think I'm speaking? No, this is Holy Spirit. I didn't even think about this. He has given us freedom. We are not bound by our sins. He has freed us from that. Why is it that we return to it? Because we choose to. We choose to go back to it. We nobody forces us. Satan could look, 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 look. Satan could put the gun in your hand. He could put the gun with the ammo and everything lock and loaded, right? Go for it. Yeah, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. But who pulls the trigger? Who pulls the trigger? We do. This is how the devil gets the church. This is how he gets the lukewarm. Because he says, he puts the gun in your hand. He says, do it, do it, do it, do it. You want to fall back. You want to fall back into your sin. You want to fall into your lust. You want to fall back and messing with that old ex. You want to fall back into your old addictions because you love that stuff, right? But who pulls the trigger? It's not devil. We want to say it's the devil. We want to point this devil, the point of that finger is, oh, it's your fault, Satan. You got me into this. You got me falling back into my old sins. It's your fault. You've been tempting me. But who pulls the trigger, guys? We do. That's why we don't feel like we're free. Because we pull the trigger and then we go, wait a second, but God, I thought I was saved. But God, then we question God's salvation. We doubt God's salvation. We doubt his cross. Because we doubt him. We say, but God, I'm saved. How is it I'm falling back? God, I'm saved. How is it I'm falling back? But you're not understanding. Who was the one that pulled the trigger? Be honest with yourself, guys. Go in prayer. After this video, after these two hours, or you do it now, leave now, whatever. I don't care. I want you to, to understand that there's joy, immediate joy that comes into your heart. When you acknowledge, God, I pulled the trigger. It was me. I'm the one that fell back into sin. I'm the one that fell back into to the vomit. I'm the one that fell back into my old flesh. I'm the one that did it. It was me. Free me like you did when I first came to you. Empty my, empty my heart so you can fill it. Empty my soul so you can fill it. Empty my spirit so you can clean me. 
when you have firm faith, he will give you perfect peace. I promise you. I think the video is about to end. I think it's about to end. I'm not sure. Uh, if it does, remember, just join me again. All right. He will give you perfect peace, but you must have firm faith. But the way you have firm faith, but you have to admit to God who you are first before God tells you who you are in Christ. Guys, I'm telling you because I experienced it, okay? I asked God, I said, God, expose this heart. What is wrong with me? Why am I falling? Why am I falling? How am I falling back into old sins? How am I still have a desire to play video games? I thought I gave that addiction up. But God is like, listen, I have freed you from Egypt, my people. I have freed you from the shackles of those chains, but you're the one that puts it back on. Oh, so good. You're the one that puts it back on. You put the chains back on and you say, God, but God, but why this? But God, but God, why is this? God says, I already freed you. I have given you the key. You are saved. Why do you think you're not saved? Because you doubt me. You don't have faith. Oh, so good. Who am I talking to tonight, guys? Who is hearing my voice? This is not Justin. This is not me. Listen, this is God speaking because he did it with me. He said, Justin, you don't lack. I mean, you lack these three things. You lack consistency, discipline, and faith. But most of all, faith. Because you still put on your chains. You still put on your chains. That's why you struggle. And listen, hey, hey, hold on. Before I finish, I'm not saying we're perfect. I'm not saying we're perfect. We're going to fall. But we're not going to fall every single time. We're not going to fall every single time. Guys, we're going to get right back up and we're going to get in the fight. Because that is what the enemy wants. He wants you to stay bound to your chains. Listen to me. He wants you to put the chains back on. This is how the devil triumphs over lukewarm Christians. Listen to me. The devil succeeds because he makes us think we are still slaves to our sin. Because then the devil does this. Then he entices you. He says, oh, you're not a Christian. You wouldn't do that. You're not a, you're not a son of God. You, you're just like me. You have pride. You can't give that up. You love that stuff, right? But what do we say? Take off the chains, guys. It's so, listen. I, I wouldn't say it if I if it, it's not real. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it. Trust me. I, I will shut my mouth right now. If you don't listen, if you don't believe anything I say, you you turn off this stream right now. You leave right now. If you don't hear the presence of God, I will not accept false prophet, false whatever, false doctrine. I don't accept that. You don't believe me? You get off the stream and you pray to God. You everything I say to you. If you don't believe me, you take it to God. Please don't ever take what I say and just keep it. Take it to the Lord. Say this: What Brother Justin saying is true? Then you could release me from these chains. And God will be like, I already freed you, my daughter. I already freed you, my son. I will give you perfect peace, but you don't want it. You want the chains. Do you want to be shackled? You want to go back to Egypt? I already put you in Israel. Do you want to go back to Egypt? You want watermelons and melons and all these fruit, but I got honey and meat. I got milk and milk, meat over there. I got spiritual manna and doves coming from heaven for you. But you want watermelons. You want fruit from Egypt. You want the sins of the world, but I'm giving you blessings. Guys, we can be free. You think I have this joy? You think this is for me only? You think you think this passion, this fire in my heart is for me? No. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to keep it to yourself. He wants you to keep your mouth shut. He's like, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you want fire for God? Okay, but don't, don't tell nobody about it. You, 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 you see all these people encouraging, right? Uh, I, I'm going to get into the second part. Here we go. This is the uh, second will come. Uh, praying for, oh, all right. Amen. Amen, sister. That, that's what I'm talking about. You pray. We pray in the chat. That's awesome. If you think, listen to me, if you think by going on Instagram, all right, this is for my creatives. This is for everyone that, that, that knows that has a gift. Let's look at, there's many, many encouraging brothers and sisters out there that does videos to encourage you, right? You think that I'm the only one. You think I'm the only one that's been doing this? But what does this devil tell you? You don't need to get on there. There's so many of them. You don't need to put up your artwork. You don't need to put up your music. There, there's too many Christians doing that already. You're just going to make it worse. Don't, don't do that. Just keep it to yourself. Just keep the gift to yourself. We're going to make sure that nobody knows about your gift. Thank you very much. That's what the devil's going to tell you. But I'm here to tell you today, whatever the Lord has given you, even, even, listen, listen, even if it's just a gift to love somebody, Never forsake the gift. Never forsake. If you see all these people with gifts, you look at me. Oh, Justin can do this. Justin can do that. Justin can do it. 
Don't compare. God has placed a specific gift in your heart for you to do and, 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 and use for his kingdom. I don't care what it is. Do it for the Lord. You can ask for gifts. You want to ask for gifts? God, give me so many gifts. I want to serve you in all these ways. But what we do is, is that we start getting hooked to the gift versus what we're supposed to do with it. Uh -huh. There's so many people out there that you think are doing the same thing as you, but you don't know what God is going to use you for. You don't know what God is going to use you for. Look at me. You, you, look at me. You think I, I got on Instagram. I'm like, there's no way nobody's going to be watching me. There's nobody who's going to be watching my videos. What do I have to say? I have nothing to say. But it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about what God wants to do. It's about his perfect will to be done. Oh, so good. So good. I get fired up. I'm, I'm, I'm burning up because God is so good. Listen, listen, listen. God has put something in you for you to do on this earth. And that purpose will be fulfilled. We're all like Jonah, man. We're all like Jonah. God has called us to do something, but we're like, not right now, God. But what does God do? He lets us go. He's like, yeah, you, Jonah, you want to run? Go run after me. Go, go, go. You want to run? You want to run to Tarshish? You want to go on that boat? You want to run? Go ahead. But you think I'm going to let you go? I'm going to let you do what you want to do, but you're still my son. You're still my daughter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little spin to a scripture today. You know how God says he's never going to leave us nor forsake us, right? Never. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But that still applies when we're still being disobedient, guys. <laughs> Who am I speaking to today? You want scripture? You want Bible? God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. But that also means when you're trying to mess around with, with the sin, God's like, I'm not leaving you nor forsaking you, my child. You're mine, but I promise you I'm going to correct you on that one. I promise you I'm going to take you into the belly of the fish on that one, and I'm going to take you into some private time because you and I need to get correct. Oh, so good. So good, so good. You and I need to get some things sorted out. But you know what? You know how beautiful God is. When you do Him wrong, listen to me. This, this, this is how. This is the God that we serve. When you do Him wrong, when you do God wrong, and He rebukes you and He chastises you and He puts you somewhere, right? God always deals with you privately. Ah, oh, so good. God always deals with you privately. He never embarrasses you. He says, "I know you've been sinning." I know you've been struggling. I see it. Don't think I'm not watching. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. You messing around. I see you. God's watching. You don't think God's watching us? He's watching. Oh, yes, he's watching. But God is so good. When you say, God, fix me, please. I messed up. Can you fix me, please? God is like, I'm going to fix you. But you and I need to get in some private time. I'm not going to do it in front of your family. I'm not going to do it in front of your friends. I'm not going to do it even in the body of Christ. You and me are going to sort this out. Because once you're done with this, I'm going to send you to what I originally sent you to do. And that's what he did with me, guys. Ah, so good. That's what he did with me. I've been so disobedient with the Lord. You think I'm on fire for God before? You think, you think I was on fire before then when I was messing up? You really think that? Oh, watch what's going to happen when God uses you in that way. But we got to be stop playing games. We need to be honest with God. You need to be honest. Say, God, expose my heart, please. Tell me what's wrong. What's wrong with my faith? Why do I not feel your peace? God will reveal it to you. He will reveal it to you. I promise you because he loves you. He wants you to grow in him. And he wants you to grow in him. And then he also wants you to show that love to somebody else. You get what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope I'm clear. God wants to show you that. Put peace in your heart. The joy in your heart. So that you can show it to others. So they can see you being on fire for the Lord because he is in you so that you can show them it's not me, it's him. Don't look at me. I'm just the vessel. Don't look at Justin. Don't look at me. Jesus, he's the one. His word, this, this, this blessing he has given us. He has given us this Bible. Listen, I never understood how beautiful and how blessed we are to have a physical Bible. There's brothers and sisters, they, don't, they can't even have this, right? I forsake God's word so much because I treat, it like, I treat it like leftovers. But now I'm nourishing on his word. And I mean it now. You can see it. It's not fake. I'm not faking it. You, you, you can look at me and be like, eh, he's probably faking it. But 
I have this thing in my heart where I read scripture now, it's different. I'm taking word by word, verse by verse, breaking it down, breaking it down like I'm eating meat. I'm partaking of the meat. I'm taking away the bones, taking away this, and I'm taking away the fat, and I'm taking away what God wants to really show me. And I and I and I love it. I love that I could pull, I could look at scripture and say, Wow, God, I'm sorry I've been missing out. I'm sorry I've been missing out. I'm a Christian. Listen, I'm a Christian, guys. I'm a Christian. I am saved by the blood of the Lamb, but I never knew how good we had it. God has given us his word to nourish on. That's how we win, guys. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory because Jesus already won. But all the devil has to do is put a little doubt in your mind. Make you think you're still on these chains. Those chains are broken. Those That door is wide open. But we stay there. We stay there. We stay there. We stay locked to those chains because we want to keep staying with the food that the chains are giving us. We want to keep partaking of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. And Satan is right there. He's like, yeah, mm, you want that fruit again? <laughs> All right. You want that fruit of good and evil? Surely you won't die. Surely, surely. Come on now. Beloved by the Lord. Of course you won't die. But when you partake of that sin, guys, there is consequences. There is consequences, guys. Listen. You and I and everyone in the body, we can do this, okay? I promise you, we can do this. And it's so simple. You gotta be honest. Okay, this is, this is I think it's gonna end soon, but we're gonna go into the second hour. I know I keep saying that, it's just I don't have a time frame on me. I'm so sorry, I should have I put a timer on it, but you know, this is first time, sorry, I apologize. But our walk with the Lord, okay? I want you to understand something. We Christians have a dual duality in our prayer. And what I mean is this. God is so close, right? God is so close that when you pray to him, and I'm talking about when you're in your moments of, of, of just desperate prayer, like, God, I, I need you right now. God is so close that he could put his hands around you. I'm serious, guys. I felt, I have never felt it before when God, is put his hands around. He's like, listen, my child, I got you. I'm right there. I'm right there. Right? I'm right there. Don't talk to me. Like, God's voice is so calm sometimes. He's like, listen, I'm right there. I, I know you're struggling. I see, I see it. I know you're failing. I see it. I know, I know you want to serve me. I see it. You gotta give up. You gotta give up this charade. You gotta give up this charade. Because who you're who you're lying to is yourself. You're lying to yourself. You, you tell me, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Break the chains. Break the chains. Break the chains. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Break the chains. Break the spirits. Break the demons. Break this. Break that. But is that what you want? Do you really want me to break those chains? Because I will break it. I already did it. I already went to the cross. But you don't want it. Because you want the world too. Got, got to be honest. You want God to, you want, listen, you want God to be honest with you? You got to be honest with him. He already knows your thoughts. So why are we lying to ourselves? Why are we lying to ourselves? God already knows our thoughts. Why are we lying to ourselves? Be honest. Be honest. He will show you something just so good. God is going to show you something. But you got to be honest. You got to be honest, guys. And now what I mean about the second part of the duality of our prayers is because as close as God is, he's still perfect. He's still holy. He's still righteous. We are his servant. He is our king. We are his servants. He is our king. That's the beauty of the duality of our Christian walk. Is our father is so close. Oh, so close. So close. Yet we bask in his glory. We, we praise him because he's our king. That's the God that we serve. It never makes sense to man. It never makes sense to, to, to the world how we serve God in this way. God, that makes all the sense. We are his sons and daughters. We are his sons and daughters. Don't forget that. Yes, we are his servants. And don't forget that either. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We are his servants. Here to do his will by his Holy Spirit. And we will move in that power and authority that he has given us as his servants because we we're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant in heaven, right? We are also his sons and daughters. 
who loves us so much, he will never leave us nor forsake us. But that also means he will never leave us or forsake us in our disobedience. Oh, so good. He will never leave us in our disobedience. He will chastise us. He will rebuke us. He will put us in our place as a father or mother would do to their children. You got to put discipline. You got to put punishment so they acknowledge what I did was wrong. What I did was wrong. But you think that's it? You think God is just going to keep punishing you and punishing you and chastising you? No, God does that. So he's like, listen, I, I'm making sure you understand. Don't do that again. Do this. Serve me. Do what I say. Don't do what your flesh says. Don't do what the devil says. Do what I say. And when you go this way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you straight. I'm going to get you right back on track. I'm going to get you straight, get you right back on track. But we can't, we can't trust. This is, the, this is the other thing that I, I need to explain. Some of us, myself included, for a long time, until, but now it's different, but this is from before. Some of us, we are so sure God's going to forgive us. We're so sure God's going to forgive us that second time, that third time, that fourth time. But you're not God. God can forgive you as many times as he wants. But you cannot assume that you will make it tomorrow. You cannot assume after you have sinned. That God is just going to forgive you and give you right back to, to doing what he's doing. And the reason why I say this, I just want this to be clear. The reason why I say it this way is because sometimes we get comfortable in that lifestyle. We get comfortable in the cycle of vicious, sinful cycle where we come up to God, we ask for forgiveness, then we go back into sin again. We come to God, we ask for forgiveness, and we go back to sin again. Doesn't that sound like Israel? Doesn't that sound like Israel where they just assume that, God, please, our deliverer, our savior, save us. God is like, all right, I'm going to save you. I'm going to send a prophet. And they're like, Jesus, oh, God, we glorify you. We praise you. We're going to sacrifice to you. And what do they go right back to doing? Sacrificing to false idols. Bowing down to Baal and Astaroth and all the false pagan worship. Right? And then they ask Jesus, God again, God, forgive us for we've forsaken you. And God is like, guys, you need to listen. You keep doing this. I need to really humble you. What did God do with, with Israel? He sent Babylon, guys. He sent King Nebuchadnezzar. He sent the, the army of Babylon. And he took out Jerusalem to show his people, listen, you need to stop. You need to stop. Because what you're doing is you're causing other people to not believe in me. Oh, wow, so good, so good. By your disobedience, you are causing people in your family to think that I'm not real. Because of your disobedience, you're causing your friends to think you're a joke. Because of your disobedience, you're causing people that when you evangelize, they're going to be like, man, you were here last week smoking up a blunt. You were here last week at the club. Guys, listen. Don't think we can assume God's forgiveness. Do not think you can assume God's forgiveness. Do not think you can assume that just because you have sinned, oh, if I go back to God, he'll forgive me and I can do it again. You might not say it that way. You're not going to say it flat out. You're not going to say, oh, if God forgives me. I can go back and do it again. You're not going to say it, but your soul is saying that to God. You're telling God to his face, forgive me because I want to do it again. Forgive me because you're a good father and I'm going to do it again. Forgive me because I'm going to go back over there. I'm going back to Egypt. Forgive me. I'm going back to Egypt. Forgive me. Going back to Egypt. And God is like, no, 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 no. All right. All right. Hold on. Time out. I love you. I do. God loves God loves us so much. You understand. His love is beyond this world. Anything we could ever think or imagine. But we cannot assume, guys. We can't assume. We cannot walk in this life. Listen to me. You cannot walk in this life assuming that you have tomorrow. And we might not say it. You, you might not even show it. But on the inside, you know. Because I, listen to me. I Excuse me. I assumed God's forgiveness. Right? I assume God's forgiveness. But why is it that, that I believe that I was not going to make it into heaven? Right? I assume God's forgiveness. I ask God to forgive me for my struggles every single day. Right? Just, just God forgive me. God forgive me. But why is it that I never had peace in my heart? I, God forgive me. God forgive me. God forgive me. But why is it that I never had his joy? Because I knew on the inside... Am I really asking for God's forgiveness or I'm asking for a tardy slip? I'm asking God for a permission slip to let me just do what I want. Oh, man. 
No, guys, guys, we got it all wrong. The body of Christ got it all wrong. We've been doing this all wrong. God's mercy and grace is beautiful. But what we do is we take it and we exploit it. Because now we say, yeah, we're sons and daughters now. I can do whatever I want. I'm free from my sin, but I want to go right back to the club. I'm free from my sin, but I want to go right back to the alcohol. I'm going to be free from my sin, but I'm going to go right back to looking at sexually explicit things. I'm going to go right back to all that fun stuff. What? God freed you from that. Because he doesn't want you to go to that. He wants you to go to him. God freed us from this because he wants you to be here with him in his hands, holding him. Okay? Listen, listen. I I'm not saying it to judge you. I'm saying it because God did it with me first. He did it with me first. That's why I, I, I when I do my videos, he does it with me first. Okay? We got to stop going back to Egypt. We got to stop going back to the sin. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but who is our strength? Who is our example? Do I need to take you to scripture? Luke 4? Who was in the desert being tempted by Satan? Our Lord and Savior. What did he do? Did he tempt him? Did he fall into sin? But people can say, well, Jesus is perfect. Of course he would not sin. Jesus is perfect. Of course he would not fall into that. Jesus is perfect. Of course he wouldn't do that. But you're not understanding why Jesus did that example for us. Think about it. Why is it that Jesus was being tempted by the devil? Why is it that the devil tempted him after he was hungry, after he was thirsty? Because God is showing us, listen, what I do on this earth, you're going to do. <sighs> Ooh, here we go. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to see if you really trust in me. When I fill you with my Holy Spirit, I want to see if you really trust me. I want to see if you have faith in me. I want to see if you trust in me. So what did Jesus do? Jesus takes this beautiful, not the physical, the spiritual one, but this is, you know, just the example. He took the sword of the Spirit. This is what our Lord and Savior, this is why Jesus is so good. He's so powerful, so good. He's, oh, I bask in his presence. He's amazing. Jesus is our King of Kings. The devil is like, listen, I know you're hungry. I know you're the son of God. Come on, man. We used to be best friends in heaven. Turn that bread to uh, that stone to bread. Come on, Jesus. I know you're in your flesh. I know you're fully man, fully God. Put that stone, stone, make it to make it to bread. What does Jesus do, guys? Does he fall in? Does he say, mm, I mean, let me, mm, okay, <laughs> all right. I mean, I am the son of God, right? Let me, let me just turn that stone to bread. Nobody gonna see me, right? Like my ministry hasn't started yet, right? We good. Nobody's seeing me. No, guys. What does Jesus do? He said scripture. He said, man will not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. <sighs> it is written. It is written. It is written. Do you not think that pisses off Satan? Satan is like, okay. All right. Now I'm going to throw scripture at you. You know how it says in Psalms 91, if you fall off this uh, this cliff here, say, uh, Jesus, you know that the angels are going to, they're going to hold you up. You're not going to dash your foot against the stone. Isn't that crazy? But why does Satan do that? Satan does that because Satan knows scripture, guys. Satan is an archangel, right? He's not stupid, but he's not, he's not perfect. Satan knows scripture. He knows Genesis to Revelation. He knows the whole book. A lot of Christians don't even know scripture. That's okay. Just listen to me. Saying you know scripture. So he's going to throw scripture at you. He's going to be like, aren't you saved? Aren't you saved? Isn't the blood of God upon you? I thought you were a new creation in Christ, but why are you still falling into your sin though? Are you sure you're, are you sure you're a son and daughter of God? Because you kind of keep falling into that sin though that I keep throwing your way. Are you sure? You should kind of, you know, question God. You know, I'm just saying. But what does Jesus do? He's like, no, you are not going to use my words against me. Because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. And it's going to convict me of sin, righteousness, and judgment. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me that's going to show me how to win this battle. You can't touch me, Satan. You already know scripture. This is what you do with Satan, my, my beloved brothers and sisters. You go all the way to the book of Revelation, okay? Oh, so good, right? 
go all the way to the book of Revelation. Every single time the enemy throws something at you, you question and doubting and your, your flesh is flying all over the place and you, you look like you're about to fall into temptation and your trials are too much. You just, you just take it into the scripture and you read it for yourself too because your flesh needs to hear it too. You take it to scripture and you say, oh, mm, wait a second though. It says here in Revelation, I know you read that part saying, so I'm going to read it to you again. It says here uh, saying that you... Your false prophets and the, the beasts are going to go be put into the lake of fire and brimstone and burn for all eternity. Mm. It says here for a thousand years, you're going to be put in prison and we're going to be hanging out with Jesus on this earth for a thousand years as his children serving the Lord on earth. And then we're going to battle you and you're going to lose. And then God's going to make the new heavens and the earth and you're not going to be here no more. I don't know, Satan. You can tempt me with all this all you want, but I know what's going to happen to you. Listen, guys. We need to remind ourselves, God's promise, it's going to get hard, it's going to be tough, but we need to have faith and trust in God. And what does he do? He shows us the victory. Oh, so good. Sin can't touch you because you're already saved, but he's going to make you doubt. He's going to make you worry. He's going to make you frustrated. Fiery dart, fiery dart. <laughs> Perfectly aimed at your flesh. Perfectly aimed at your flesh. But what do you do? Throw that shield of faith up. Not today, Satan. My flesh ain't falling up today. I'm not falling to that temptation. I'm not falling back for that ex. I'm not falling back for that old life. I'm not falling back because that person is dead. I died with Christ on the cross. My old man is dead. Yes, we live in our flesh, and yes, we're going to be battling every day, but we remind our flesh every single day, I am dead. That life is not mine. I am new in Christ. I am resurrected spiritually with the Lord. Oh, so good. So good. God is so good. That's why Paul says you are a new creation in Christ. You're not that old man. You're not those old garments, that old dirty rag. God has put a garment of praise upon you. God has put a, his armor upon you, the whole armor of God. He has put that upon you so you can know when it's time to go, when it's time to fight, when it's time to go to war, when it's time to fight the flesh, when it's time to fight the spirits and demons. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. I ain't done today. When it's time to fight and it's time to go to war. Are you going to war angry? Are you going to war frustrated? You really think God wants you to go to war frustrated? You already have the victory. Why are you going to war frustrated? You think Joshua, when, he was, when God says, I'm going to give you Jericho, just do what I say. Okay. I'm going to do exactly what the God says. You think he was frustrated? No, man. He was filled with the fire. He was like, listen, I'm about to take Jericho for the name of Jesus. I'm going to take Jericho for Israel. I'm taking Jericho. I'm taking all these countries with me because I'm trusting in my Lord. Ah, so good. So good. Who's that for today, man? Who's this for? Who is this for? Ah, it's for me. Love this stuff. So good. Man. Listen, guys. Uh... All right, I'm going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I want to, I want to go into the ministry part, but I want to wait for the, the stream to end, and then we'll go into the second part. But whatever, it's fine. So listen, now we got to this point where every Christian, every believer, every brother and sister in the faith, listen to the sound of my voice. God gives perfect peace to those who have firm faith. It is promised Perfect peace does not mean you're going to always be happy and woo, like woo, woo jumping all for joy. I mean, I feel great. I know God's joy is in my heart, but there's going to be some times where we're going to be struggling. But really? Yeah, right? I noticed it too. It's definitely been going on more than an hour, right? All right. I'll run with it. That's fine with me. Um, but we don't need to be walking in this life, walking like we're not saved, walking in this, in this walk with the Lord, thinking that we're not going to make it. We are going to make it. Jesus already died for us on the cross. Don't be bound by your chains. Acknowledge them and tell God to take them off and stop walking in your shame and your, your sin. Forget about that stuff. Often don't end at hour these days up to three hours. Oh, pff. thank you, sister. Let's keep going. Let me just let me just plug in my laptop before it <laughs> turns off on me. One second, guys. I should have done that earlier. I apologize. We're going to keep on going. But I need to charge my laptop for you know combust. All right. Is it good? Uh, yes. Recharging. Yes. All right. Uh, if this laptop dies because it's very old, I might have to switch to my phone, which is fine. I'm not gonna stop. 
All right, so now we are all updated. I am here in front of you to tell you the joy of the Lord is our strength. You can have that same joy in your heart right now, the same fire, the same passion, the same zeal. You will have this, but you must be honest with the Lord, okay? You need to go to God in prayer and say, God, expose my heart. Give me private time. I want to grow. God will give you private time and he will show you your heart. He will show you what you lack in your faith, okay? Once you acknowledge that those things that God has shown you is the problem, do not sweat it. Don't bask in it. Oh, don't be like, oh, man. That's, oh. Tell God, please fix me in these areas. And God start. God is the, the great physician. He's like, shh, the surgeon. Shh, I'm going to sit you up. You want consistency? I got you. You want discipline? I got you. You want faith? I got you. God's, God is so good. He's gonna. He's like, listen, I got you. You are my children. I got you. But you and I need to get in private time. You would need to tell me what you want from me. What is it you want? I already know what you want. What do you want? What do you seek? Right? Please take this to prayer. Say, God, expose my heart. If you Only if you feel your faith is stagnant. If you feel like you're on fire for the Lord, you don't feel like you're, you're contending or struggling, then you're with me. We're on the same page. But if you feel like how I was before December and you feel like, oh, man, why is it that I don't have God's peace? I don't, I don't feel like how I used to. Why is it that I don't, I'm struggling? Then you got to do what I say. If you don't believe me, fine. But take it to prayer. Say, God, expose my heart. Expose my heart. Show me what's wrong with my faith. Why is my faith stagnant? Tell me, tell me, Lord. Tell me. Show me through scripture. God's going to give you a joy, man, that's unbelievable. This is how we win. This is how we win against persecution. This is how we win against trials. This is how we win against hardships because we say, God, you are our joy. I can get through this. You are my, you are my strength. I can get through this. You give and you take away, but I worship you. Awesome. So good because it has nothing to do with us, it has nothing to do with me, it has nothing to do with you, it has everything to do with the Father in heaven, it has everything to do with Jesus Christ, it has everything to do with the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Because when you acknowledge what's wrong with you, and you tell God honestly, What's wrong with my heart? and God starts restoring it, people are going to see your fruit. People are going to see your fruit. Your family's going to see your fruit. Your brothers and sisters, your wives, your husbands, your children, whoever, they're going to see your fruit because they're going to know that's genuine joy. I want that. That's genuine peace. I want that. Where do they get that? And we don't have to be shy about it. We don't have to be shy. My hair's a mess. Who cares? <laughs> we don't have to be shy, guys. We could just tell them straight up, listen, this peace comes from God. This peace that I have in my heart comes from Jesus. He is the only one that can give me peace in the midst of a storm. He is the only one that I know when he is sleeping. I am okay. Why do you think Jesus was sleeping on the boat when his disciples were in the boat and the storm is going on? Why was Jesus peacefully asleep? I wonder. Peacefully asleep. He was peacefully asleep. He did not move. He was sleeping good. And the disciples were like, Jesus... Jesus, Jesus, you gotta wake up. Jesus, Jesus, the storm. Jesus, we're gonna we're going overboard. Jesus, Jesus, like, what? I'm Jesus. I'm God. I could tell that storm to stop any minute, but you don't have faith in me. Who's living that right now? That's for somebody. Who's living right now? Who's in the boat right now with Jesus? And they see Jesus sleeping and they're looking at the storm and they're like, Jesus, look at over here. Jesus, look at my rent. Jesus, look at my finances. Jesus, I don't got a job. Jesus, I don't got a husband. Jesus, I got a wife. Jesus, I got no kids. It's getting late. Jesus, Jesus. I need you. Wake up. And Jesus is like, man, do you not trust in me? Why do you think I'm asleep? What do you think you should be doing? Oh, oh that's so good. What do you think you should be doing? If Jesus is perfectly asleep through your storm, what do you think you should be doing? Looking at him. Praising him. Jesus, I know when you wake up, this storm will cease. Oh. Jesus, I know when you wake up, this storm will stop. I ain't worried about it no more. You see this joy I have? You can have this. Guys, this is not just mine. It's yours. It's everyone in the body of Christ. They can have the same fire. Because we keep looking at the storms. We keep looking at our trials. We keep looking at the hardships. We keep looking at all the problems of the world. But we're not looking at the perfectly asleep Jesus. We're not looking at how beautiful, how beautiful our Lord is. The attributes of God, his perfection, his holiness, his righteousness. We're not looking over there. We're looking at the storm. And we get scared. 
and doubt and fear and worry. All these things start riling up in our hearts because we're not trusting in God anymore. But what we need to do is look at Jesus and be like, Jesus, you're so good. You've gotten me out so many storms. Why am I doubting you? Jesus, I know you can give me that peace. I'm going to look right at you. I ain't looking nowhere else. I'm going to sit right next to you. I'm going to get so actually, I'm going to lay right next to you, Jesus. I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep my eyes on you, Lord. Think about it. Think about it. When Jesus wakes up and you're on the other side of the sea, when that storm stops and you're on the other side of the sea, like where I'm at right now, guys, I'm on the other side of the sea and I'm evangelizing and worshiping with Jesus. If you feel like you're in the storm right now, you feel like you're in the thick of it. I'm talking about you're in the thick of your trials. You're like, oh, this is so hard. Listen to me. Jesus is perfectly asleep in your boat. You need to stop looking at the storms. Stop looking at the sin. Stop looking over here. Stop looking over there. Keep your eyes on Christ. I promise you, he will get you off the boat. He will get you on dry land, but you need to trust in him and have faith. And when the storm is over and you're walking side by side with Jesus, nothing can take away that joy. Nothing can take away that peace. Because you're saying, Jesus, man, I'm with you in the storm, out of the storm. I'm with you in the good times and the bad. Jesus, I am with you because you are my king and I am your servant. You are my king and I am your servant. You are my father and I'm your son. I'm your daughter. Ah, so good. So good. Okay. Now, I have shared such a beautiful, beautiful move of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to end this off in prayer too. Don't ever think we're not ending off this prayer. You're going to hear that fire come out. But first, now, what I wanted to get to, that beautiful transition of my life. I have gone through the storm with Jesus. He has been perfectly asleep in my boat. And now I'm on the other side with a ministry in my hands. By the Lord's grace, he has given me this ministry. And I want to express something to you all. This ministry... It's not mine. All I'm doing is just a vessel for the Lord. The Armored Ephesians ministry will have Bible study on Sunday and on Friday every uh, at 7 o'clock. And on Wednesdays, we're going to have intercessory prayer meetings at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock. I, I have, a, I have a, like a printout like in, my, in my chat. If you want to join, I have a Skype chat available. Listen, I'm going to do these videos on live regardless. But if you want to have more fellowship, more talking with, with me, and you know, and there's two sisters that are with me right now that I love so much that are, they're, they're in the group. You can come with us, chat with us. We can partake in scripture together, fellowship with one another, right? You're more than welcome to join. Let me know at the end of this stream. I'll send you the Skype link. It's in my Facebook page. Just look at the bio, but I'll send it anyways. Just let me know. You could join. You could do this together. More than welcome to come into this ministry. I, I, I do this for a reason. I do this because I want the body of Christ to know that we are going to grow together. I want the body of Christ to know that this is not um, uh, something that you need to go into if you feel forced. Let it be led by the Holy Ghost. If he wants you to join the ministry, join in. If you want to just partake in the fellowship and the Bible study and the prayer meeting on Instagram Live, no problem. You join in. More, more the merrier for me. I just want to express what God has done in my life to you every single time that I get on video. Um, another thing, uh, before I end this off in prayer, I want to make sure that this is understood, okay? I'm giving you my word on stream, okay? God has shown me what it means to walk the Christian walk in the fullness of his power and authority. Okay? And this is not only for me. This is for every single able body believer that has faith in the Lord. We are all in this together. Okay? My job and my purpose in this earth that has God has placed me on this earth to do, besides being a, a having the gift to be a husband and a father to my wife and children, an honor that I am, I am so grateful for. Okay? The other thing that God has me on this earth to do is to encourage and to strengthen the body of Christ. 
and to do it with the fire of heaven, with the Holy Spirit guiding each one of us, okay? I want this to be so crucial. I'm giving you my word. Every Bible study, every prayer meeting that I'm doing going forth with this ministry is going to be led by the Holy Spirit. I am not taking charge on this. This is all led by the Holy Ghost. I want him to take full authority. Okay? I want you guys to grow. I want you to have the God's peace. I want you to have God's joy. But you need to be honest with the Lord. You have to be honest with the Lord. Don't You don't believe me? That's fine. Don't just take my word and run with it. Again, take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in scripture. Always, always take whatever you hear from your ear gate, from your eye gate, whatever you put in your body. Make sure you take it to the Lord and say, Lord, is this pleasing you? Lord, is this glorifying you? If not, you throw that sucker out. Don't even waste time with it. Okay? Ah, oh, so good. Now, I'm going to end with prayer. Whatever you guys want to fill the chat with, please do. I, I love doing this with you guys. Anything you want to say, whether you're encouraged, you want to join the ministry, whether you just want to be part of the Bible study prayer meeting, if you want to just join the lives, no problem. More than welcome to do these things. I'm going to go in prayer, and then I'll read some comments, and then we'll end this out, all right? And this, is, this is just going to be a move of the Holy Ghost, because I've been wanting to pray since the, the beginning of the, the stream, but I wanted to save it for the end, okay? Oh, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Lord, thank you. Father, we glorify you. We honor you. Just show everyone that's on stream right now, everyone that will watch this video, what it means to have true joy in your heart, true peace in your heart, to have faith in you, Lord, firm faith. Just move Holy Spirit right now so that everyone here can understand that this is not Justin. This is not me. This is just a vessel that you use, Lord. And I'm thankful that you can use this vessel in this way. Hallelujah. Father, we magnify you. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you do. Everything you do with my life and the lives of my brothers and sisters on this chat. Lord, we praise you, Father God. You are the reason to our existence. Without you, we are dead. Without you, there is no life. But with you is life. With you is peace. With you is joy. Father, this is how we take it to... Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is how we take it to the kingdom of darkness. This is how we take it to spirits and demons. This is how we take it to war. This is how we fight our flesh. This is how we win battles because we're trusting in our Savior. We are trusting in the finished work of the cross. We are trusting in the Father in heaven. We are trusting in the power and authority of the Holy Ghost that you have told us that when you leave and go and ascend into the heavens, that you will send the Comforter. You will send the Holy Spirit upon your church. You will send the Holy Spirit upon the body of Christ to, to descend upon us and be filling us with the fire from heaven, the oil in our lamps, that, Lord, we are ready. We are ready as a body of Christ to move in one accord and one power and one authority, Lord, because this is how the world will see us. This is how the world will see the power of Christ upon us when we have your joy in our hearts and peace in our hearts. And we can say to the enemy, to his face, you are not my master no more. You are not my master no more. I am not your slave, Satan. I am not your slave, flesh. I am not your slave. I am a servant to the king. I am his slave, free to choose him. Hallelujah. I am not bound by my chains because the chains have been broken off of me. Hallelujah. I am not bound by my flesh because the flesh has already died with Christ. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yes, I live in this body. Yes, I dwell within this body, but this body is not who I am. This body is just a representation of what I used to be because what I used to be is a mess. And now we are messengers. Woo! We used to be a mess, but now we're messengers. We are taking our tests. Now we're making it the testimony. What we did it before, before Christ, now we're bringing it to the to the spotlight because we're going to show people Christ. We're going to show people what Jesus has cleaned up. Lord, there is no one who is exempt. There is nobody too dirty for you, Lord. You will clean them up, put a new spirit and a new heart upon them. You will remove their heart of stone and put them in a the heart of flesh, as you say in Ezekiel 36, 26, or 26, 36. Forgive me, Lord. You will put in them a new heart and a new spirit, a new song upon their hearts. They will sing and praise and joy, have joy in their hearts. Father God, I pray over every single person who watches this video to not look at me. To not look at me, Lord. 
I pray every single person in this video knows that they have the same Holy Spirit inside of them, the same fire from heaven inside of them, the same spirit, same passion, same zeal to do exactly what I'm doing and that much more because you have put gifts in each one of us, Lord, to do your will in this earth. So when we leave from this world to the next and we have a smile in our face when you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. I'm going to bestow you upon the crowns of heaven to show you you are welcomed into my kingdom, not by your works, not by your own doings, not by your own righteousness, by my righteousness, by the mercy and grace that I have extended as a free gift of salvation upon my children, upon all of creation. I want all to come to repentance, but you must seek me. Hallelujah, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus, for that fire. Equip my brothers and sisters for war, Lord. Equip them as armored Ephesians. Equip them with the armor of God upon their bodies, Lord, that they will go to battle and they will have a smile on their face every single time Satan comes up against them, Lord. Every single time the enemy comes up against them, they will have a smile on their face saying, not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. You will not have my flesh. You will not have my flesh. I am not a slave to you. I am not bound to my chains. I am freed in Christ for he is free. Freed me for who the sun sets free is free indeed for he who dwells within me is greater than he that is in the world. We need to know this words. I pray over anyone that's struggling right now. I pray over anyone that's struggling with sin right now. I pray over anyone that's that's not in the faith right now who has they don't even know Christ Lord. I pray they will come to the foot of the cross. I pray they will come to the foot of the cross and they will see your precious blood being slain for them, Lord. And the love that extends and that goes beyond any love that a man or woman can give to another person. That love that comes from the center of heaven, from the throne of grace itself. The God of the heavens and the earth, the creator who has made creation to worship the creator. Move, Holy Spirit. Move on my family. Move on my friends. Move on the body. Move on them, Lord. Move on them. Let the spirit that you have put inside of me, this fire that you put inside of me, let me not keep it, but let me extend it to my brothers and sisters so they can be on fire too, doing the same things, Lord, preaching to their family, preaching to their loved ones, Lord. They don't have to worry about me, Justin. They just need to worry about their walk with the Lord. They need to just worry about themselves to you, Lord, because we are not here to compare. We are in the race together. I praise you. I magnify you, Father God. And I thank you, Jesus, for the mighty move that you have put upon this church. The fire from heaven as we go into 2021. Firm faith. Firm faith. Firm faith gives perfect peace. Firm faith. You will give us perfect peace because we need your perfect peace. We need your perfect joy. Your perfect praise. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for everybody that was tuning in, Lord. I thank you for everybody that will watch this video later on. And I say this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Woo! You can have the same joy. You can have the same passion, the same fire. Don't look at me and think you can't have this. Don't look at me and be envious of me. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. Looking at over here, looking at that brother, looking at that sister, thinking, oh man, I want that ministry. Oh man, I wish I had that many following. Oh man, I wish my art was like that. Oh man, I wish I could do that. Don't do that. God has put you on this earth for him, for his will. Don't worry about nobody else. Yes, encourage your brothers and sisters. Yes, be there for your brothers and sisters, but don't be envious of your brothers and sisters. There's a difference. Be encouraged by your brothers and sisters. Be there for your brothers and sisters. Fellowship with your brothers and sisters, but don't be envious of your brothers and sisters. We are not the world. Listen to me, church. We are not the world. We are not competing. We are completing. Woo! Yeah, I love when the words come out so easily. We are not competing against one another. We are completing one another. Guys, hear me completion is in Christ alone and Jesus alone his love alone is what sets the glue to the body of Christ if we do not have his love as Paul said if we do not have love as the foundation of what we do every gift everything every prophecy of all these things all these gifts that God has given us without love they are nothing trust in the Lord trust in him be honest with the Lord seek his face seek it Glorify the Father. He is a God to be praised and worshipped. This, this is how we get to know Him. This right here, this beautiful book, this physical book that God has given us is a blessing. This right here is a blessing. Don't forsake the Bible. Don't forsake prayer. Don't forsake fasting. Don't forsake fellowship. You want to be a part of the ministry? You come on. You tell me in a DM, Justin, I want to be a part of the ministry. Welcome. Regardless, we're all part of the body of Christ. 
The Armored Ephesian ministry is just for me to, to have fellowship in a group chat with all you guys in a Skype. If you want to join, you, you are more than welcome. No, there's no... There's no limitations. All I ask is just, I just ask you, ask the Lord first if that's what he wants for you. That's all I ask. Don't do it in, in the flesh. Don't be like, oh, yeah, I want to join. I want to join. I want to join. Hold on. Take it to prayer and say, God, is that the ministry you want me to join? And if he says yes, welcome. If he says no, you pray and you find someone else that's going to strengthen you as God wants you to strengthen. Okay. I'm going to end this video. I'm going to pray and hope that this live stream will be saved. I, God, please let it be saved. It's, it was so good. It was so good being with you guys. It was so good to talk with you guys. I can't believe it didn't end because like uh, my sister said earlier, sometimes the streams can go for three plus hours. So I'm like, okay, this is good. So I'm praying. I'm hoping this stream will end. I pray that I could save this video and upload it. If not, ah, okay, fine. Everyone that joined, it was an honor. God bless you all. And come on Sunday, Sunday, we're going to do the first ever Bible study called, the series is called Mercy and Grace. We're going into the book of Jonah, chapter one. Sunday at seven o'clock, book of Jonah, Mercy and Grace, chapter one. Be there. All right. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Amen, amen, and amen.